Welcome to the Curator of the Culture, your weekly portal into the vibrant intersections of style, innovation, and culture. I'm Garrett, the curator and guide through this journey. From the latest sneakers to groundbreaking tech and car designs, we're here to explore it all. But before we dive in, let me share a bit about myself. I've been immersed in the world of design since the age of six, sketching shoes and cars with a passion that only grew stronger over the years. I honed my skills through countless hours of design, eventually creating over 5,000 edited sneaker mock-ups, a journey that led me to an interview with Nike in 2017. Though they didn't offer me a spot on their team, I refused to be deterred. In 2020, I unveiled the Fear God 6, a bold fusion of the Air Jordan 6 infrared and the Nike Fear God 1s. The design went viral online, eventually being made for Trinidad James by legendary shoemaker the Shoe Surgeon. But I didn't stop there. I continued to push boundaries, unleashing the world's first Bluetooth LED Nike Air Force 1s, a testament to my relentless pursuit of innovation and creativity. Join me each week as we uncover the stories, trends, and personalities shaping the landscape. This is the Curator of Culture. Hello, welcome to the Curator of the Culture. I'm your host, Garrett, your weekly podcast where we talk about all things going on in the culture currently. Let's get started. But before we do, I want to introduce to you my new beverage company, People's Beverages. We want to start out with this lavender lemonade. Some of the best stuff I've had. It's got five simple ingredients, filtered water, pure cane sugar, honey, steeped lavender. What else could you ask for? Make sure to tap in. These are going to be available all summer. Thanks. But let's get back into the show. So we're going to start out with... um footwear and uh we got i got a lot i got a lot um that i want to talk about but we'll just breeze through the topics now just so you you guys have a, um an idea of uh the direction and where we're going to head but um first we got a couple um of my instagram friends uh being invited up to nike um so that's pretty cool we got uh nike sb doing an air max 95 and uh air force one allegedly um, we have the Dunk Genesis RTFKTs that are um, supposed to be released. We have Kyrie signing his father. We got Yeezys going on sale. And we got, uh, uh, yeah, New Balance and Action Bronson. But uh, we also got Stone Island 574s that I really want to talk about as well. Uh, so that's that for um, footwear. Then we go into sports. We're going to talk about um, this Red Bull new record um, that they set and then WNBA beefs. Moving forward, we're going to, um, moving into pop culture, basically. Uh, we got a lot, a lot to talk about. Uh, Vince Stables is uh, seasons renewed. Uh, Trump is guilty. Britney now versus then. Um, Dr. Pepper. Number one, or uh, sorry, Beats Pepsi. Um, most liked comment on Instagram. And Twitter accepts porn now. And lastly, uh, father says don't touch him. Or he doesn't want her touching him. Sorry. So yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll dive into that. Um, then we're going to go into um, automobiles. We got a new... Um, 911 hybrid, a $325,000 Mustang um, that we'll be talking about. Jeep announced a $25,000 um, EV, and a 13 year old was discovered working for Hyundai. Um, yeah. And lastly, Japan uh, has invented a tooth regrowing drug uh so well, well let's let's dive in <laughs> yeah um uh, so first up in, in in the footwear news um i seen a couple of the uh you know fellas that i've always been cool with um mr unloved ones and uh z sneakerheads amongst some other guys that i'm, I'm not really familiar with but um, I seen them at Nike campus, you know, um, via IG. And um, 
it was it was like uh a lot of a lot of mixed feelings for it maybe um you know what I mean definitely no hate but I you know I don't know I thought too at a point like this is what it took for them to get there was the bubble popping and Nike and Nike and Jordan sales not being what they were and so now they want to finally tap into you know the culture or some other side of the culture to try to to try to get some type of um something you know what i mean some type of sauce pretty much um and it was it was it was more notable for me because z sneakerheads is a sneaker leaker um and while i know it can't hurt nike's business of him announcing shoes before they drop it, it just it it also is pretty like maybe eye opening to see that they would welcome him there you know what i mean i don't know like but i think it's definitely dope you know what i mean like it's a, it's a it's an amazing place to visit so you know what i mean if you ever obviously if you get the opportunity you know what i mean obviously take it but um I, I thought it was it was interesting and like, you know, they're going up there as like influencers, but when they brought me up there, it was for a position, you know what I mean? So the energy was totally different. It wasn't like some chill back, you know, kind of like, let's look around and, and shit like that. It was more like, you know what I mean? Why are you here? What can you do? Kind of thing. Um, and that that part of it was nerve wracking for me. You know what I mean? Because like, loving loving a brand so much and then finally being recognized and then you know the 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 potential of working for them you know what i mean just being based off of being recognized was like that's an awesome feeling so you know without question it would be a dream um but you know every everything happens for a reason and um you know i say salute to them for making it up there but uh i don't know what it's going to do for 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 the brand you know what i mean in turn like there's only so much you can do with a one you know they've already hoard, hoard that shoe out to a point where you know what i mean brand new releases are going on um on like sale before they even drop and some weird like crazy crazy shit these days um like they on stock x before they release under retail like that's crazy um, you know what I mean? So that says a lot about the market and obviously it being beyond saturated. So bringing a person that's only interested in retro ones, I, I don't, I can't understand how that's going to help you. Like you guys got to move away from retro ones. Um, you got to move away from retros really, or at least the stuff that you got, you know, that they've been touching for the last decade, like. You need new stuff. It's just, you need new stuff. Um, and, and I understand like people, they've tried and companies tried and then they don't get the reception that they want. So then they just go back to what is working, but you gotta keep trying, you know what I mean? Like eventually something's gonna pop, but you just gotta, you know, figure it out, make it make sense. Um, and that's where they're like missing the mark. Like they, they have technology and um you know that they that, that they do for shoes and stuff and, and clothing and everything else but the way they implement it isn't fly at least in terms of um lifestyle lifestyling anyways and you know you would think lifestyling is a is a, a major part of the business um so i'll digress on that oh yeah the nike sb air max 95 and air force one um, I, when I, when I, the Air Force, I, I'll say this first, the Air Force One has already been a thing. Um, there is at least a sample out of, a, um, Air Force One SB. I don't, um, particularly get it. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Um, it's not necessary. And then the 95, it's like. That is a, a big bubble shoe. I always thought that um, 
skateboarding was like about board feel and everything. So you want to be closer to the board. And that's why you want a thinner, um, flatter sole, which in Air Max 95 is not in any circumstances. So I'm like, at this point, this is a blatant cash grab. They seen what the Jordan 4 did, which also, it made sense because that's a utilitarian uh, style shoe. And it's at least flat somewhat. Um, that like made sense, but an Air Max 95 on a skate, like on a skateboard. Um, and if it, if it comes out to be like a neon cut, like I hope it doesn't come out as a neon colorway. Um, I, you know, I hope they would do something original, but, uh, as a whole, I think I'm good on this, uh, hybrid Nike SB thing. I can just see it going really south and you know i see them just pulling at strings trying to make anything pop or see what pops and um yeah this ain't it for me uh next up we got a dunk genesis rtfkt um this was like uh, a shoe that nike did with a um what do you call those uh nft it was like an nft company or something and they did like shoes and I was really surprised at the time to see that Nike like partnered up with this company that was making kind of like fake NFTs of Nike shoes, um, you know, but it just goes to show that, no, you know, nothing makes sense. And if you, if you know, just whatever. Um, but anyways, they got these new shoes that are like dunks, but they're like, a modern version of it and they light up. I'll, you know, put a, a picture up of, of them. Um, they look pretty cool. I mean, like this is a futuristic shoe, obviously. Um, and so they're supposed to be releasing these finally. Like they're supposed to be just like this super limited NFT type of style release. I don't know how many shoes they actually made of like each, you know, I don't know how many made, but apparently they supposed to be hitting sneakers a um, thousand pairs at two hundred and twenty two dollars a piece, which um, like if they glow, like if they light up and and everything like I, I feel like that's a, a very that's a super um, great buy a um, thousand pairs. So, they're, you know what I mean? That's a super limited shoe as well. Um, and then I also did hear that there's supposed to be three to four colors releasing um, maybe of all of the ones that originally released before or maybe they're going to all hit sneakers. Um, which, you know, I, I think, you know, it's cool. Uh, I definitely like whenever they pop up, I definitely try just to see if I can hit on them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just want to touch on those. I thought that, that I thought that was uh, interesting. Next, we got um, Kyrie signing his father to Anta. Um, and Anta is a, a, a Chinese company that Kyrie signed to about almost maybe two years ago now. Um, and so he just now got his first signature model. And with that, um, he, oh yeah. So Kyrie, basically he's the brand ambassador for the company. So, you know, he's pretty much able to maneuver in within this company, um, however he wants now. And so, uh, his father was an, a basketball player, uh, I think maybe overseas. I'm not sure. I don't know a whole lot about Kyrie, um, and everything, but, his father was a basketball player. I know that overseas, I think even in Australia, that's how he got the um, whole Australian tie-in thing. Um, and so I think maybe, you know, he's a professional baller over there. And so now Kyrie has signed him to, or, you know, got him signed to Anta. So now he's going to be getting his own signature shoe at however old he is. You know, I'm assuming he's at least uh, 50, you know, at least 50 years old. So he might be the first, 50 year old player or 50 year old to ever, you know, get a signature shoe and to definitely be signed by his son. So, you know what I mean? That's like the flyest shit ever. So I think we all need to um, clap to that and, um, you know, send praise because that's, that's super dope. Um, you know, uh, that's like a dream to be able to uh, accomplish that. Uh, next there's been this whole thing with the Yeezy Day and the Ye and Adidas still selling Yeezys and everything. Um, I seen something la either last week or, or, or within this week saying that Nike or Jesus Adidas still had uh, 
I think over three hundred million dollars worth of uh, Adidas Yeezy um, stock, merchandise, and so they are there. There's now pairs on Adidas website that are half off. Um, which is crazy, you know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, think about three, four years ago, um, a, a Yeezy being half off was insane, and now they can't even sell them like at half off kind of thing. Um, yeah, my my have times changed. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't know. So I I mean I don't think I like I still see people wearing Yeezys, but I don't think anybody's buying like fresh ones. Um, like I, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like I, I have a pair too. I have a pair now, um, the salt, salt waters. Um, I would like, they were, they were a great, like everyday shoe. And I just put them away once he started talking crazy, but, um, like I, you know what I mean? Like I'm still going to hold on to them and still wear them. They still comfortable. Um, it's still a great shoe. Uh, we moving on to, um, something that I found particularly interesting and it really made me uh, think. Uh, so New Balance and um, Action Bronson, they've been collaborating for a few years now. And uh, this latest drop, I believe on Action Bronson's uh, website, you have to buy a $110 crew neck to be able to buy the shoes that are, I think, $160. And so um, while it's genius, to like it is you know it's genius that you're, you're you're selling something that a person ordinarily might not have bought you know what i mean but it's also like i don't know man like me personally if i wanted the shoes maybe i don't want that damn that crew neck especially not at 110 you know what i mean so i think it maybe would i think it would have been flyer to Drop a, a whole cap. Like if you got a sweatshirt, you might as well drop a whole capsule. And the stipulation is, is you have to buy at least one item out of the capsule. You know what I mean? So think about the high school kid who just got the 160 who want the shoes. And now he can't even, you know what I mean? Now we got to come up with an extra 110 to get them from, from, from your site. That's a, that's a bit much to me. Um, and I can't, you know, I can't agree with that at all. Um, and, and it was, there was a, uh, I, I, I came into this, this, this episode about thinking about the shoe in a different light. I don't particularly care for this shoe. I don't particularly care for the model too much either, but this, this collab is like beyond lackluster to me, like beyond um, and a lot of the collabs that they've been doing, like the Jack Harlow one, the same, it's the same shoe, you know, um, different collab that it's a horrible looking shoe. They're not good looking. Like they just, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I'm missing the wave somehow on, um, no, nah, I'm not because I know it. Like I'm logical. <laughs> I'm not at all. This like, it just don't look good. And people are sheep. And they aren't thinking for themselves. And I mean, and granted, they might be dope to some people. Like, you know what I mean? Everyone's tastes aren't the same. And I, you know, I recognize that. But a lot of the shit that they've been doing is not for me. But one thing that is, is the Stone Island 574s. And what's, and, and what's also crazy is I've never liked 574s, ever. Like, it was always the, the the poor man's New Balance, like you know what I mean. I think they were like fifty five dollars back in the days, and you know what I mean. You just get like it was just a shoe you get just to match an outfit kind of thing, and you know not to knock anybody. They just were like plain, and I really didn't like. They were just it was the design of them and the sole was just they weren't for me. But Stone Island did something different with with this shoe like the whole um the mid the, the the tooling on these are different um slightly and it just looks like it just I don't know they look a lot better and it, of course the colorway is a fire too um and I'm pretty sure they only retail for $110 or 
which I was like, I was pretty surprised because if you don't know about um, Stoughton Island, I'm pretty sure they're a, a, a French brand. And it's one of those brands, like a, if you know, you know kind of brand. Um, they have a, a patch. I'll, t I'll link, I'll show the patch as well. And like, it's kind of, it's one of them things, like if you, it's a status symbol for sure. And so the t on the sh on the tongue of the shoes, it has the patch, which is fly. You know what I mean? And um, I, I, w I just expected the shoe to cost a bit more than um, 110. And maybe I'll fact check it before, you know, um, afterwards to see. But I did like what I seen and said they were one um, 110. And I'm just like, yo, that's 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 pretty dope because they're dope. And um, you know what I mean? That's a good you know, you're going to get a good quality shoe for sure. And it's a collab. So, you know what I mean? Uh. Yeah, let's move forward. We are uh, sports. So um, Red Bull broke a new record for, uh, it was like, a, I don't know, a, a jump, like a, a free jump. But Buddy was on a, you know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. I'm going to just, I'm going to show you. I'm going to, we going to watch it. Because that's, I can't, I can't even, I just seen it. And Buddy was flying for seconds, like just midair. So let's watch it and then you'll see what the hell I'm talking about. Like it, it, it don't even look real, bro. Like, I crazy. Um, but Red Bull is out here doing some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? They're really just pushing everything to the extreme. So I appreciate Red Bull for what they do. Um, next up, I wanted to touch briefly on WNBA beefs, and I say briefly because I haven't actually watched the game yet. But it's making all of the rounds on social media. Um, between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, um, between the two of them, just making headlines. Um, you know, Caitlin Clark's pretty much being abused. <laughs> and it, I'm not laughing at her being abused, but, um, you know, she's she's taking a lot of hits and stuff um, around the league. And, uh, you know, I guess I, I understand to an extent maybe why when you come in as the face you know what I mean? It's a lot of animosity from people that have been there a lot longer than you. You know what I mean? And, you know, all these kids are there to now see you. And, you know what I mean? Like, it, they just got to accept it's a new day. You know what I mean? I guess this hasn't happened for them like it's happened in the NBA several times over. You know what I mean? Like, each, each you know, um, generation, a new player comes in and kind of, like, sits the old guy down. You know what I mean? And I don't think the WNBA has had that. Um, to this magnitude and so they um it, it shows and with Angel Reese um you know what I mean she's been having her own her own issues and um you know it's it's still like I said I don't know if it's a a favoritism thing where they're picking on Angel Reese and you know making um Caitlin Clark the darling of everything or what, but I've seen some stuff where Caitlin Clark did some nasty moves too. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I know it looked crazy. Um, you know, in, ter in terms of 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 that, but you know, they all need to be all need to be happy because they're getting exposure that they never had. And um, I said, oh man, who was it? Someone mentioned that. You know, players are starting to finally uh, fly private now, and you know they're all super excited about it. And like, and like he said, yeah, like yeah, that's great. But what about the pay? You know what I mean? They're only making a, I think, a hundred and seventy-five thousand a year, or or seventy-five k, or something, something like that. A really no, a really low number, a year, and it's just like, yo, to fly private. Why don't y'all, you know what I mean, get, divvy that up and put that into more of a, um, you know, into their salaries, you know? Um, but I don't know. I guess it's one step at a time with that, uh, you know. Let me, I don't know. Let me know what you guys thinking about this stuff so far, uh, especially with the women's, like, 
I want I be wanting to watch, but um, man, it's hard for me to really catch up on all of the NBA games. I can't say that, especially because now there's only a few. Um, but it was. Um, but yeah, I, want, I do want to see it, see some, see how they're playing. Um, next up, we got pop culture. Vince Staples is renewed for a season two. Um, I'm really happy. I didn't see, I couldn't see him not being renewed for a season two. Um, I, you know, uh, I think, I think the show was uh, awesome and I hope, I, I, I'm sure they're not going to give him longer than 30 minutes just because the first season was 30, but I would love for it to be a little longer. Um, especially if it's on like Netflix, like a 30 minute show on Netflix is strange. Um, unless, unless you're going, you know what I mean? Um, you got like 10 of them joints or something. Like if you, you know, if you're going to give me a 30, 30 minute episode, at least give me a 10, a 10 episode season is all I'm saying. I think he got six, maybe, you know what I mean? So it was good, but it, you know what I mean? Left you wanting more, which is also good. Um, so shout outs to him. Next up, we got Trump guilty in a uh, New York city of hush money trial. So um, I seen that he was guilty of several felonies. Um, first question, can you run for president as a felon? Can anyone tell me? I don't know. I didn't want to Google it, but I would like to know um, because if so, that is fucked to every felon who can't get a normal job somewhere. Um, but this is America, right? Uh, yeah, that's incredible. I, I, I do, you know, I'm, I'm wondering also if you get say 10, 15 felonies, how, you know, is it possible to get no jail time whatsoever? Like, how is that possible? How? F 10, 10, 10, at minimum 10 felonies, no jail time. Crazy, man. I just I, I was on um on social media per you know of course, and uh, I seen this picture, and uh, it was a you know basically a Britney Spears now or a, a then versus now, and it sums up the state of the world perfectly. I'm gonna show you guys. I mean I'm gonna show you right now. Look, but I just thought it was the perfect you know, culmination of what the hell's going on these days. Um, it doesn't get no, no purer than that. Uh, yeah, I, I just want, I just want to share that. And it, you know, it's a literal, um, I don't know, example or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, man. So we got this, and it's weird because I stopped drinking soda a long time ago, but I found it to be super interesting that Dr. Pepper passes Pepsi in popularity. Um, I think it said maybe for the first time ever. And that is amazingly um, surprising to me because you know what I mean? You got a lot of other sodas <laughs> um, and, 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 and I'm saying they're all bad. You shouldn't be drinking soda at all. None of, none of that shit's good. Um, you know what I mean? But to beat Pepsi was like, damn. That's, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 st I don't never see nobody drink no, no Dr. Pepper. Like, ever. I knew one person in my life who, like, drunk Dr. Pepper religiously. One person. That's it. Um, and so Coke is still number one, which is also weird to me. Because my thought is, is if, I don't know, maybe it's for the Alkies who drink uh, Jack and Coke a lot. If that's the like reason why it's number one, then I won't argue because that's a mean combination. But if people just drinking Coke, like as a beverage, you're strange because Pepsi is definitely better. But again, you shouldn't be drinking any of that shit. Uh, next up, the most liked uh, comment on Instagram thus far with 4 million likes, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, and I don't follow him. I'm not a soccer person fan. Um, but 
It was like four million people liking one comment is a lot. Um, and it speaks to, you know, obviously the reach of that person. Um, I, I, you know, I find, I just found it incredible that, you know what I mean? That that was possible. So yeah. Um, Twitter <laughs> officially allows porn now after policy update. And, um, if you've ever been on Twitter or X now, um, you've probably always seen porn on there. So this was like the biggest, uh, sh the biggest, like, I don't know, head scratcher ever. Porn's always been on there. Um, you know what I mean? But now it's allowed. Uh, okay. I wish there was a lot less to be honest, because when you on Twitter looking for some other stuff, you just happen to see porn like all the time and it, it can't get a bit much. Um, last up, father blocks the uh, hand of a black guy shaking his daughter, shaking his daughter's hand. I don't want her touching him was his words at a graduation. Um, it's going viral. And, um, so yeah, he just walks up and I'm going to, I'm going to have to link it because you got to watch it. So watch this really quick. I, I'm, I'm just like, you, you, you know, you in a, you in a place full of people, you don't even like care of perception. You know what I mean? Like you feel that strongly, you know, like, man, that's, that's, that's conviction. Um, it, you know, but it's, it still speaks to our, our, our society. Um, you know, these days for sure. Uh, there's still, you know, racism still alive. They just be, you know, now I guess it'd be blatant sometimes. Um, we're going to move on to automobiles. Porsche announces a new 911 hybrid. Um, we People have been waiting for this day for some time. Um, it's not in the manner that people probably expected, um, myself included. Um, it's totally logical. And if you know Porsche, it makes sense. Um, they're going to be doing it in a GTS model. So basically, they're getting a new engine in it. And they're going to be pairing it with um, an electric motor kind of thing that obviously adds performance. It's not about range. It's just added. Um, it's like and it's electric motor, but it's like an electric turbo or something like that. And so it's all about performance with them. And um, it's going to, you know, it's going to be awesome. Price goes up a pretty decent amount now. Like I think it was up to like 160 grand for the GTS and uh you know, like, man, that's a, a lot of bread. But, you know, the performance speaks for itself. There, uh, Ford is building a $325,000 um, Mustang. It's called the GTD. And um, it's still like, I think, uh, I don't know. If, I don't think they started building them yet as far as going into production. But they are. But they have this um, new, they have the suspension window in the back that you can actually see the suspension of the car working. And um, it's super cool. Like obviously, if you're driving, you ain't gonna be able to look behind you and see it. But the fact that you can actually see the suspension working um, is pretty cool. Um, Jeep is announcing a $25,000 EV. Uh, I know last, last episode, who was it that announced a $35,000 um, EV? And so, 25 is even crazier. Uh, it'll be pretty cool to see how that goes, what the range will be. But hey, it might be probably the cheapest EV on the market, I would think, uh, which would be pretty cool to see. Um, and lastly, in auto news, there was a 13-year-old girl discovered working at a Hyundai plant in Alabama. And um, when I seen this, I, I was just like, well, for one, I seen it was a 13-year-old and I automatically assumed it was a boy just because I'm just like, you know, how could a 13 year old girl pass as, you know what I mean? As, 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 a, as anything other than a 13 year old girl, 
But you know what I mean? You know, uh, who knows? But I'm just like, man, who the hell runs that place? Is it robots? Do they only scan just the ID? Not, You know what I mean? Like, what is going on? Like, what 13-year-old girl is just like, you know, I'm not I, I'm not going to school. I got to go to the plant, you know what I mean, and make some, some cars today. You know, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't hang out after school. I, I got to go to the plant. You know what I mean? And I like, hey, if you get paid, I'm all for it. But how, how'd you, how'd you put an application in? Who interviewed you? Like, what is going on? Are you feeling like, is she filling in for somebody else? Like, if she, that would, like, that would be logical. That would make sense. To an extent, like maybe her older sister looked just like her and she started like she went in or something. Um, but it was something about like they got audited at the plant and um, there was just talks of underage workers. And I think the the uh, legal working age in Alabama, at least working in a plant, was like 16. So it's really young to begin with. So. Granted, I guess they might have younger looking people working there already, so it's not that far fetched. You know, she can maybe look a little older than 13. You know, maybe she looks 16, so then she fits in with working there. Um, but th that whole scenario sounds insane. Um, you know, so I, I would hope to hear more about it um, and see how that all resolves or whatever happens with that. Um, and uh, last up, Japan is growing. I'm not, no, 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 no. They're not growing. They're creating a drug that regrows teeth. Um, and it sounds su like supernatural or something. You know what I mean? Like, how does that work? Um, does it regrow a missing tooth? Or, you know what I mean? What if it grows a tooth, like, somewhere else? You know what I mean? Or in the middle of your damn mouth? Or how does it know? Or what if you got a full mouth of, what if you got a full mouth of teeth already? And I, like, and you take the drug, what happened? You know what I mean? I mean, granted, you probably, you probably a dummy, but I want to know, like, how it works. Like, does it know that there's a space in your mouth missing? some nerves or missing some, what, how's it work? Because this sounds insane. And I'm missing a tooth because I ain't want to get a uh, root canal. And I wish I would have got it because now I'm missing my tooth. But if I could pop a pill and get that joint back, like, hell yeah. Um, For sure, let me take one. You know what I mean? So uh, they... They started testing, they're starting to uh, test on humans. And so if they're starting to test on humans, typically trials, I think they go from two to four years. Um, so I would say, you know what I mean? Within the next three to four years, there might be some tooth growing drugs. And I mean, like imagine the junkies and the people who teeth fall out from all sorts of diseases and, and things. You know what I mean? Like that'd be pretty crazy to uh, be able to uh, regrow some joints. Uh, but then there's a whole, you know, I, I don't know, who knows? I, you know, I don't want to go too far into theories on like veneers and, and that shutting down that whole industry. But if you think about it, it possibly could. Um, if you can just swallow a pill and, and grow a tooth back, you know what I mean? And I don't know if it's a pill. It could be a damn, you know what I mean? A liquid something you swallow, something you got to be injected with, something you smoke, you know, who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, it, you know what I mean? 2024 and beyond is uh, interesting. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, that's pretty much been the show, guys. Um, I know this was a little quicker. I'm glad. I don't want them all to necessarily be an hour if they don't have to be. I was a little nervous about the uh, content, but I felt like we got um, got through a lot of a lot of uh, good stuff, a lot of good information um, that'll definitely push us into the next week. And again, um, thank you for uh, sticking this long. If you have pause, no ditty. Um, th thank you for watching this long. Still no ditty. 
But, you know, if you have, obviously you enjoyed it or you're, you know what I mean, or you're really supporting. So just make sure you, uh, you're you sub subscribing and liking. Leave a comment, um, please. You know what I mean? Whether you liked it, if there's anything you think I should change, uh, any topics you think I should cover, um, any revisions. You know what I mean? Like I said, this is all a learning process and um, I'm just a catalyst that's starting it. And, um, you know, it just takes one person to start it. I, I put up two. It just, it's, it just takes one person, though, you know what I mean, to start it. So, um, yeah, you know, stay tuned, tap in. And for sure, People's Lemonade, Lavender Lemonade. I just started brewing this. It's not going anywhere. I'm working on new flavors as we speak. It's going to be the wave. It's really good stuff. Five simple ingredients. Fresh squeezed lemons. Pure cane sugar. Pure honey. Organic steep lavender. Filtered water. That's it.